Hey, how's it going, everybody? <clears throat> and boy, that was loud. Let's turn that down. All right, let's continue on in Romans 12 and, and the, um, it's the fourth column of, let me click all these off. Fourth column of the, my dad's old King James Bible that I use. So it does get into one verse of uh, Romans 13. And I also need to turn the page. Do you know that I have failed to turn the page before and started back doing the same stuff again? Yeah, like if you don't remember to turn the page, you're not really paying attention. If y'all have really been keeping up with these Bible studies, you will see that they do repeat the same things, especially in Daniel. I mean, I'm sorry, especially in Romans, what we've been doing. I mean, Paul will say the same thing, and then he'll say it again. And then the next chapter, he'll say it again. So sometimes I haven't picked up on until a day or two later. And I think once I went through all four uh, columns again, one page, two columns, another page, two columns. So, sorry, but I did have to go back and turn that page. While I was thinking about it because if you don't, um, I'm 60 years old. So if you don't, you might not remember to do it, huh? Be kindly affectioned to one another with brotherly love. This is sheep talking to sheep. This isn't brotherly love to the world in honor preferring one another not slothful in business fervent in spirits serving the lord i'm feeling lazy go through this in the new living something doesn't sound right we'll go back over it love each other with genuine affection take delight in honoring each other never be lazy <laughs> never be lazy i just said i'm being lazy but work hard and serve the lord enthusiastically see it just it's just easier to understand but again if something's not biblically correct we'll go back to the king james and if we have to we'll look it up in the greek just trust me on that. Trust me in this little process we're doing here. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to, when God's people are in need. Yes. It's not the whole world, folks. When it talks about, you know, take care of, you know, go visit those in jail. It's not talking about just people in jail. It's talking about sheep that are locked up or telling the truth. Visiting that widow, it talks, it's not talking about just a widow. You go see some widow and um, she's got a Christmas tree in her house. You're like, oh, I did my duty. Good grief. I'm in a mood. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. To sheep. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. That's sheep to sheep. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. And that's not talking about non sheep. Paul is very clear. That we are not to be communing with non-sheep. We'll find it for you. I want to make sure there wasn't anything before it too, but here it is. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 
Again, it's sheep to sheep, not anything to do with unbelievers. You don't date them. You don't marry them. If you're already married to one, you make the best of it. The Bible's clear about that. For what fellowship have righteousness, sheep, with unrighteousness, goats? And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord have Christ with Baliel? Or what part have that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? Because you have Christ in you, right? So that is the temple of God. Sheep only. You talk to people, man, they like, well, you know, the Pope, Pope, that's the mark of the beast. You know, they get, it's, I'm like, no. <laughs> no, they said that it's the abomination. That's what it is. And they also tell you it's the mark, but they'll, they'll go, it's, it's the abomination of desolation. I'm like, the abomination of desolation is when the Antichrist seemingly has returned from the dead. And he's standing in the third temple and starts blasphemy. And they go, man-made temple is not where God dwells anymore. I'm like, yeah, I know. But to the Jew who is the remnant, which we just went over in Romans 10 and 11. That is the holy place. These Torah keeping Jews. They get awakened per Romans 11, 25. Their blindness gets lifted when the last non-bloodline Jew gets the call to Christ, which will take place at the abomination. And Jesus says to them, when you see the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. It clearly states it. Jesus sits there and says it. He says, those which be in Judea, because that's where it's taking place, flee. What agreement with the temple of God with idols? Because you have Christ in you, right? Sheep only now. For ye are the temple of the living God. Sheep only. Can the Antichrist stand inside of a sheep's body? No. So when Jesus says, when you see the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Well, that would mean he's standing inside of a sheep's body. As God have said, I dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Well, when is, when is that said? Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. It's also restated again in the New Covenant. I will put my law in their inward parts, New Testament. It's restated in the New Testament. There's Jeremiah 31. Like I said, it's 31, 31 through 34. But I asked for New Testament. Hebrews 10, 16. It's restated in Hebrews. Anyway, wherefore come out from among, it says come out from among them and be ye separate from the goats, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. The people of this world are of this world. What does Jesus say? 
The world hated me before it hated you, but I have called you out of the world. You come out of the world. You just read it in Paul where he said, come out from them. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. If you're palsy wowsies and running around with goats, whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is an enemy to God. So when you read through this in Romans, be aware, he's talking about if you've got money as a sheep and then another sheep doesn't, don't be too proud and enjoy the company of ordinary sheep. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with all sheep. Are you supposed to be living in peace with the world? No. Friendship with the world is hatred to God. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. Now, that sheep or goats, you don't take revenge. Vengeance is the Lord's. I will take revenge. I will pay them back, say up the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil... Please, understand that in the context that it's saying... I'm not going to keep getting into it. Don't let evil conquer. If you got questions, just ask. Then we'll, then we'll get into it deeper. Just give me chapter, verse of anything, anytime. Just say, here you said in Romans chapter 2, verse 2, this. Can you explain that, please? And or say, can you explain that, please? Because it says over here in Galatians 5, verses seven through nine. And it says over here in the gospel of John chapter nine, verse eight, this. So how do you reconcile that with what you said in, you know, and I guess if you want, you can repeat the chapter and verse where I said something. Boom. We'll go over it. We'll go right over it. Love it. Nobody ever asked me stuff like that. I love to be challenged because I might learn something. What if I'm wrong about something and I just learned something? All I want to do is be right. I don't care if somebody showed me what's right. I just want to be right. I'm sitting here doing a Bible study. Do you think I want to be doing the wrong stuff? No. Be like, hey, I made a mistake here. I've done that so many times with y'all going over that revelation, going over Daniel. I'll be like, I'm not sure about that. Or I used to think that. Now I think this. Or I got to change my mind on this. I've done it right there in, 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 in mid-teaching. The light bulb will come on, on on something. So if you ever want to shed light or challenge me, uh, just know that I welcome it because that's how the Lord showed me the truth was being challenged. I believed in free will, but I believed in Jesus Christ. And I believed we were in the new covenant. My old Bible study instructor was the same and he flipped on us and he started going by the way of the Hebrew roots movement and wanted us to start keeping the Torah. He said, because we're not in the new covenant yet. He had come into some new teachings. And we argued for three months. He challenged me greatly. He was much wiser than I am. He was much more intelligent than I am. He was a computer guy. That's why I went to his Bible study. He was very thorough. He was very smart. He put together these PowerPoints. It was so in-depth. 
and I just would go and just listen. I was very lazy. I was more than happy to plop on the couch. His mom and dad would be there sometime. His wife and his son were always there. Well, his son was upstairs sometimes, but, and then our other friend was there. And some other friends were there from time to time. And, but I was a regular. And um, suddenly the Lord said, nope. Now you're going to go up against him. You're going to go up against Goliath and you're just David. Because he's smarter than you. He's been doing these Bible studies you've been attending for four years, and you just sat back and listened if you weren't sleeping, <laughs> because that gets sleepy He's sitting there two and a half, I mean, one and a half to two hours. I would, I'd just nod off. It's very hard for me just to listen to somebody. And suddenly for three months, we were back and forth every day on email. And he said, well, it says right there in the new covenant, man no longer teaches man to know the Lord. For they shall already know me from least to greatest. He goes, Does, doesn't man teach man uh, to know the Lord today? Because remember, I was still in the free will and stuff. And I was like, he's got me. I was being challenged. And after about a week to two weeks, The Lord goes, hey, goofball, it's a calling. Remember, you always knew it was a calling. You just fused free will in with it. But man doesn't teach man to know the Lord. It's Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that calls man. Like it says in John 6.44, John 6.65, no man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him you have to be drawn by god to god you cannot free will it on your own man doesn't teach man to know the lord god teaches man to know him god teaches man to know god man has no capacity whatsoever to do it on his own and i realized what election of predestination was and then I went out and searched for any preacher that was teaching it. And one guy was, his name was Jim Brown at Grace and Truth Ministries. And I found out he, he teaches so many things wrong, but good grief, election to predestination. Perfect. He taught me so much. But it was through being challenged that the, the Holy Spirit showed me the truth. So anytime any of y'all are like, I don't. I got a problem with what you said. If you, I just want to say, if you ever have a problem, state the book, chapter, verses, or verse, and then give me your chapters and verses, books, chapters, verses, that prove that I was wrong and how I taught it. And I'll either show you how I was right or I will apologize and show and tell everybody how you just showed me something again I just want to be right I don't bring my ego into this game <laughs> no sorry this is this is not the place to do that don't let evil conquer you but conquer evil by doing good can you conquer evil on your own free will by doing good? Heck no. The satanic forces on this earth would just consume you without the Holy Spirit coming into your life and then protecting you. And Christ coming in you, using your body as, as a temple. And giving you and feeding you that wisdom slowly. That's, it. That's known as increasing your faith. Do you increase your faith? No, faith comes by hearing Jesus, remember? <laughs> faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and the word of God is Jesus, and Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. See, man doesn't teach man to know the Lord. Jesus does it. You got to get the call. 
everyone must submit to governing authorities. Oh boy, do people ever use this to like promote Trump or Obama, uh, Clinton, doesn't matter. And you're like, well, they wouldn't use it for a liberal. Trust me. If somebody's still into politics, they don't truly know the Lord yet. And they might not. They might be a lost sheep or a goat. But if they're into politics, they are either a lost sheep or a goat. And they'll justify the Bible through. Uh, don't, don't think Obama hasn't used that whole um, love your neighbor as yourself stuff. Talking about, you know, the liberal ways of sharing. <laughs> well, Bill Clinton was like, well, if Jesus was here. He'd be a liberal. He was like, give to the poor. Trust me. I've heard it. Heard it all. For all authority comes from God. Yes. And don't forget, the Lord said, I create evil. I create darkness. I, the Lord, do all these things. He also said, I create the evil for the, for the day of evil, which is the abomination that causes desolation. This is all leading up to it. God's declared in from the beginning. There's nothing that takes place that God hasn't already ordained would happen. Satan's just a tool doing the dirty work that God has ordained. What do you think the book of Revelation is already written? God's already ordained everything. He didn't just know it was going to happen. He spoke it into existence, including all of the evil. And when you read the Old Testament, it looks like cause and effect. But he caused and he affected. He caused the effect. He is the cause and the effect. He wrote it all. Well, Adam did this, so God had to do that. God called out, Adam, where are you? Do you really think God didn't know where Adam was? Oh, yeah. Man, Adam ate, ate that apple. One of the angels told me Adam ate the apple. Now I got to go looking for Adam. Adam, where are you? Really? Well, because Abraham did this with Hagar, then God had to do this with Abraham. And no, God ordained that Abraham would lose a little faith and get with Hagar. That was all ordained. Talks about how God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh was born to have his heart hardened at or before the foundation of the world. Boom. That's the parable. That is the word of God. Jesus is the word, and Jesus spoke in parables. So the entire word of God is one big parable. People sit there and read it, go, see, he had free will. He had to have faith. He had to do. <sighs> but then there's that Isaiah 4610 declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, that are things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, I will do my pleasure. God has already declared the end from the beginning. Do you really think he's waiting on Johnny to make a free will decision? Don't you want to just slap the stupid out of somebody's mouth? You do, don't you? Heck, I know you do. I feel your pain. <laughs> I feel your pain. Is that my Bill Clinton imitation? I feel your pain. It's horrible. Just got through showing Bill Clinton what he's all about all of them all of them well gee i don't know the yoni hand signal oh the 666 Yoni. Oh, there's Bill Clinton. The 666 Yoni hand signal. Trump giving you the double Yoni 666 hand signal. An astro not. 666 hand signal. Seriously, people.
Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's go, Daniel. You got to read it in the New Living when it's the King of the North, King of the South. They go back and forth, back and forth. I can't, I can't, I, I couldn't no more read this in a King James than I could uh, read some Mandarin. I tell you what, man. I tell you what. I copied and pasted the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, when I see Bill, uh, just a picture of Bill Clinton, I just want to imitate him. It's not the sincerest form of flattery, I can tell you that. Not from where I'm standing. After the enemy army is swept away, the king of the south will be filled with pride and will execute many thousands of his enemies, but his success will be short-lived. A few years later, the king of the north will return with a fully equipped army far greater than before. At that time, there will be a general uprising among the king of the south. Violent men among your own people will join them in fulfillment of the vision, but they will not succeed. Then the king of the north will come and lay siege to a fortified city and capture it. The best troops of the south will not be able to stand in face of the onslaught. The king of the north will march onward unopposed. No one will be able to stop him. He will pause in the glorious land of Israel intent on destroying it he will make plans to come with this might of his entire kingdom and will form an alliance with the king of the south he will give him a daughter in marriage in order to overthrow the kingdom from within but his plan will fail which was already stated earlier after this he will turn his attention to the coastline and conquer many cities but a commander from another land will put an end to his insolence and cause him to retreat in shame Wow. All right, we'll get to more of that tomorrow. Love y'all. Any questions, just ask.